Hi, welcome to video two. This will be another fairly easy problem, but I sort of glossed over some of the details in the last code section. It was more of setting up the series. Um, this time, you can see we have the return, the sum of two numbers, uh, straightforward enough. They pass you in two, and they want you to add them and give them an answer. So usually your examples are there. Let's go to the code. So we're in here. Um, we should probably say that C Sharp is an object-oriented programming language. If you weren't aware of that, you see the fundamental unit here is sort of this class. This is, in this sense, it's more of a organizational structure where you can put some code between these curly braces. Um, in practice, a class allows you to define a custom type. So you get built-in types like these integers, int, uh, booleans, string, doubles and floats, these sort of most basic building blocks. Uh, and those are fine, they work for basic things, but as you build more complex objects, it's more convenient to roll your own, so, so to speak, use classes to organize a lot of those primitive types together. Anyway, you don't really need to know that here, but my thoughts are that I'll start talking more about some of these concepts. Uh, don't worry if they don't stick right away. The idea is that you hear them described various ways over time, and a little bit of information seeps in each time. Uh, eventually, you'll wake up and you'll know it one day. So, uh, you've been seeing these publics as well. These are known as access modifiers, and they sort of control how much the outside world can view your code, uh, meaning outside of this class. Public is the most open. Uh, it essentially allows anybody to call your methods or access your variables that are declared this way. Just know that there are other types. One is private, which is hidden. It's internal to your class, and there's one that's protected that has to do with inheritance, which we'll get to later. But that's all that is. The static keyword sort of signifies that this method doesn't rely on any particular object of this class, any specific instantiation of it. Uh, you don't need an object of this class to call this method. Again. We'll get more into that later. It's not important for being able to add two numbers together. So here we are. Um, even if you know next to nothing about programming, you can probably get a good idea of what to do here. One other thing that I didn't mention in the last video was that you'll notice with these methods, you specify a type. You don't have to. You can have void as well, in which case you're not required to return anything. But once you put a type besides void in here, you sort of are obligated to return a value of that type. So this code would not compile the way it is now. It's looking for you to return something. That's how you give information back. You know, you could return five or any number. It could be a variable value. One other thing that I don't really care for in this example, uh, again, it's simple, so it's not such a big deal, but when I write methods, I don't like these generic names like A and B. They're very, they're too generic for their own good. They don't help. Uh, and you don't need to do something really elaborate, but even something like num1 or, you know, op or operand1 or, or something that kind of uh, gives a little more insight to what you're doing. So when you have, you know, a, a fellow coworker, colleague that comes to this, it gives them a little bit more of an idea of what you're trying to achieve. And it even helps yourself when you come back to your code after a long time and need to figure out what it does. But uh, keep it simple here and use their stuff. And so you know you have to return an integer in this case. They gave you two integers and you know they want you to add them. So this can be as simple as returning a plus B. Uh, that'll perform the addition for you. And I think that covers everything here. 
The only thing else to say is that this would be the name of your method. The methods are nice. You break them into these blocks and then you can reuse them throughout uh, your class or in this case since it's public you could use it outside of this class as well as opposed to having to write this logic again multiple times in multiple places where it gets really hairy if something changes in the logic and then you've got to track down all the places and update it's a mess you don't want to do. So I think I mentioned everything there is to say in here. Uh, we'll run the check to make sure we did that right. And there's our happy sound. The test's passed. Um, again, I wouldn't worry if some of the concepts went over your head. We're just going to keep repeating them until they sink in. And just relax, have fun, soak up bits and pieces at a time. As always, ask questions. No question is too stupid, so happy coding.